Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, 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 bye-bye petrodollar, bye-bye uh, gas euro. They're going away, or at least uh, in a direct trade of gas and oil between China and Russia. That's not a good news for uh, those guys who use petrodollar and they use the dollar uh, you know, as the global currency or reserve currency because it's gonna uh, lose its value and you can just print as much as you want and get stuff. You give them paper or numbers and they give you stuff, object. So let's see what's going on here. This article comes from the Business Insider from September 6th, 2022. Russia's Gazprom is planning to sell gas to China in both rubles and yuan to shift away from the euro. Russia is moving away from the euro and will switch to rubles and yuan for its gas exports to China. The Kremlin state-run gas giant Gazprom said Tuesday the new payments would take effect immediately. Russia demanded earlier that European buyers make payments in rubles after the Kremlin invaded Ukraine. The Kremlin invaded Ukraine. Either Russia invaded Ukraine or the Kremlin invaded Maidan or something, um, I don't know, the palace of uh, Kiev or something. Uh, Gazprom said Tuesday the company will move payments from gas exports to China away from euros and shift to rubles and yuan. Russia's state-run giant, gas giant, said the new method of payment would take effect immediately for its contract with China's National Petroleum Corporation. Payments will be swift and split if evenly between rubles and yuan, sources told Bloomberg. So, 50-50. Now that uh, Russia turned off its gas uh, from uh, Europe, it's only two pipes, one is the uh, the one through Turkey and the other one through Ukraine, but Nord Stream 1, Nord Stream 2 are done. So um, I think they will um, be able to do this with no problem. R all right, so Russia has swiftly moved away from the euro and dollar since the Kremlin invasion in Ukraine again, with President Vladimir Putin demanding that countries receiving Gazprom flows in Europe pay in rubles to circumvent Western sanctions. When buyers refused, Gazprom shuttered flows. In addition to China, Russia is also using rubles to pay for gas payments with Turkey, which has not sanctioned the Kremlin. The shift to rubles with Turkey won't affect, take effect immediately, according to Bloomberg, and two-thirds of the shipments will be paid for in euros and dollars. For, for now. Russia's increased trade with China has helped boost domestic demand for the yuan. Russia is now the third largest market for yuan transactions. Outside the Chinese mainland and Western sanctions block payments using the dollar and euro, as Western sanctions block payments using the dollars and euro. Russia has already taken payment for its oil exports in yuan instead of the dollar which is the primary currency for most commodities. Russia has also accepted the yuan for coal shipments, and in March, Russia's central bank said it would use the yuan in its currency reserves. Meanwhile, Russia is considering buying up to $70 billion in Chinese yuan and other currencies from quote-unquote friendly countries to put the brakes on the soaring ruble according to the Bloomberg report. Well, how about that little piece of new news, my uh, euro and my dollar? Uh, and that is uh, just another step towards breaking away from the big club hegemony on this planet. And now we're going to have probably uh, another club, which I already said for many, many months already, uh, actually, uh, what, five or six months, that they will create a second alternative to the big club led by the uh, plantation master United States. And this second club will be China, Russia, the main guys, plus India. 
And then we're going to have, uh, you know, the countries that uh, make the foundation of BRICS countries, which is uh, South uh, uh, Africa and Brazil as well. There are other countries who already uh, ask for membership, which is Iran, and I think Venezuela is going to be uh, Argentina. So there are other countries ready to join uh, this new alternative, I would say it, which probably is going to be better for uh, a while until it goes to its regular tyrannical uh, way of doing things, because that's how things end up eventually. So um, the thing is, competition is always good. Alternatives are always good. You know, when uh, when you do something uh, or someone comes to threaten you or someone tells you to do something, they here in the United States they say you always have an option. You have options. Well except uh, the big club they don't give you option you have only one option so imagine you go to a uh, bookstore and you have one book or imagine you go to buy some shoes and you have only one kind of shoes or one pair one company what would that look like like a big monopoly and they can do whatever they want with you so um i think uh, uh, russia unfortunately i think that uh, russia and china and a new new club will create their own organizations like for instance um, insurance companies they will do their own uh, um, agencies they would oversee certain kind of uh, economic uh, cooperation or you know they will put their own standards uh, they will bypass a lot of things they will make which is something that scares the hell out of uh, our guys in charge which are the banks uh, they will make their own banks. They already have a, a pool, uh, a pool, pool of uh, money in bricks where they donate it, and they they can you know lend money to countries who are developing countries to help them with that money. So that's an alternative to IMF and uh, the World Bank. Uh, it's not it's not that uh, big at all. I would say at all competing with those two uh, monsters, but the, it's always good you know a trip starts with the first step so the same here these are guys are not at the first step they're like uh, 50,000 miles already but the other guys are like a million miles away ahead ahead so um, alternatives are always always good competition is always good and maybe maybe the big club the the owner of the big club will tone down its way of ruling the world through threats and blackmail and little uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, regime changes and bringing democracy and freedom and uh, capitalism uh, forcefully. I think they might uh, have to tone it down so the other countries that are looking around will pick them instead of the other ones who definitely will try not to, to start with, uh, not use the same kind of methods. You will see. I am 99% certain 99.9 who I say I got 0.9 percent extra so 99 percent 99.9 percent certain that the next club is in formation and it's going getting ahead and it's going all right and the dollar uh, and the euro these guys have to start producing stuff like making stuff from now on instead of just giving you numbers uh, uh, loans and uh, printing the dollar just like this and I hope that Federal Reserve Bank the private bank uh, should just be you know pushed to the side and uh, let the country make its own money not a private company dictate your uh, uh, interest rates and other things thank you very much for being with me again today stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just